Hey folks, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you would know that in the past I've done some videos on the QNAP products that we use here in studio for our backup editing and workflow. Today I wanted to update that because we have a new member in the family. Actually, correction, we have two new members of the family. Now, in this video, I'm gonna go through and explain what we're using and how we're using it, and then I'll go more into the why and the tech of behind the different products and why we've chosen to use the specific QNAP and Seagate products that we are using. But first off, backup and storage has become a huge issue for me, and it's going to be for everyone who's shooting digitally, the storage requirements are just increasing exponentially. They say over the whole, whole market, every two years, how much you're creating doubles. So say if in a month at the moment, you're making a gigabyte of data, then in two years, that's gonna be two gigabyte a month. And then in another two years, it'll be four gigabytes a month and so on and so on. It goes up exponentially. For me, it's already way, way past that. So for example, on my recent trip to Africa, I was away for a month shooting high-res stills, high-res 4K video, a bunch of different content for different clients, for YouTube, for promotions. And I came back with over two terabytes of data, probably closer to two and a half to three terabytes in total in data, all backed up you know, with two copies and then most of it still on cards as well. I'll pop some links in cards above so you can see previous videos we've done on these topics. So coming home with that amount of data to crunch and back up and know that it's all safely and securely stored so I don't have that commercial risk is really a huge issue for me. So first of all, let me just explain what we're using here in studio. So I've previously introduced the TVS 871T. That's the Thunderbolt 8-bay drive that we're using that's blistering fast. I tested it and it was faster than, you know, some SSDs in terms of the data write and read speed that it can achieve writing in RAID. Now, if you're not clear, NAS means network attached storage. It means you can access your files from different computers in the studio or different places around the world. RAID means that it's writing the files. There's a couple of different, well, there's several different types of RAID, but basically it means it's writing the data across different drives in a way that you could have a certain number of the drives die and your data still be safe. You just need to put in new drives and have them backed up. So, you know, with that one being so fast, how our current workflow works is when I get back, we dump all of the files onto there into the team folder that we can both work on. And then that's where we will make the videos, get the projects ready, get the photos all you know edited and get the, the edits done on them. And then once it's done, things are delivered to the client and it's time to move on to the next trip, then we transfer it across from the 871T across to this guy. Now this is the TS1263U. This one is a 12 bay unit and obviously it's rack mounted. So it's quite big. You've got four drives going across and three going down. It's turned off at the moment so I can pull this out. Each of the drives just slide in or out. We're using eight terabyte NAS drives in each of those slots. I'm gonna to get to the tech in just a moment. Now, long story short, this is huge capacity and this is going to be our long-term storage. Well, as long as possible. You can see this is a rack mountable unit. If we get second and third ones in the future, then we'll be buying a proper rack cabinet for them. But for now, it's got fans and everything in there. It does fine on the desk. We've checked all of that out. Now, a great benefit of this is that using the QNAP software, we can actually transfer from the 871T to this one directly and turn off all the computers and it all just goes through. We're running it via a switch. Let me also mention the what I'm using on the road. I did a video on this recently, but the other latest addition to the family is this Lacey Rugged Raid. It's um, got two two and a half inch, two terabyte drives in there, already arranged in RAID. It's got the built-in Thunderbolt cable if your computer has that. Otherwise, it's got USB 3 as well. So this is drop rated and splash and dust and all of those things. It's been tested and rated and it puts everything in RAID straight away. Now, so when I'm on the road, I need to have multiple backups. When I get in the studio, the same's true. And given that the internet in Australia is so slow, trying to back up all of the data we're creating into the cloud is not realistic. So select files we do, but everything else that's going to be in studio, I need to know 
has a really good you know backup so this is our main one of course then we have offsite and some cloud storage as well so now let's talk a little bit about the tech behind the particular products that we're using okay so first of all let's talk about the hard drives that we're using and why i've chosen the seagate nas particular type of hard drives now i have to be honest when i first looked at hard drives and started looking into all of this sort of tech years ago it made sense to me that the higher speed ones or the ones that had a bigger buffer or those kind of things, why they cost a premium. But then seeing the NAS ones were quite a bit more expensive than the standard ones, didn't really. And for a long time, I never used NAS drives, even in my NASs, I used standard drives because of that price difference. But fortunately, and as I've disclosed before, I do have a relationship with Seagate and with QNAP, and you know, obviously I have choices in who I'm going to use, but that relationship is developed over time, and I was able to get in touch with them and kind of find out the difference between the drives. So, this is a traditional drive. It's a three terabyte older one, Seagate Barracuda, and then this is one of the ones we're using in here. It's an eight terabyte NAS drive. Now, forgetting the capacity difference, they're the same size, same interface, all of that kind of thing. But what's inside is what matters. Isn't that deep and meaningful? So a standard drive, your desktop drives, they're rated for desktop office kind of use. So they are kind of made to, to endure eight hours of use a day, five days a week, and they say up to around 55 terabytes of data transfer a year. That's kind of what they're specced out to do. Whereas the NAS ones are built for full-time 24 seven use and you know data transfers up to 10 times that. So really a totally different league. So obviously the components they're using are completely different. When you put something like this into a rack like this, then you've got 12 drives all moving, so you have much more heat generation and you've got much more chance for vibration. The drive itself spinning at you know 7,000 RPM creates its own little vibrations. So imagine when you've got 12 of them or even more together, all of those vibrations could get onto different timing and create real wobbles that you wouldn't see to the eye, but it might be just the tiniest hum you can hear. And when you think about how fine the data tracks are on a hard drive, that could be the difference between you know, data integrity and not. So these ones actually have you know, data, uh, what do you call it, a kind of a, you could call it a vibration compensation or vibration reduction like in your camera lens built into them so that they can manage that vibration a lot more effectively and they are rated to go at higher temperatures as well as for longer hours. So there's a price premium, but if data integrity is what you want and this is the environment you're going to be using it in NAS much more than you know 40 hours a week, it's a no-brainer, why wouldn't you? Now, in terms of eight terabytes, now, again, looking at the price, I always thought, why isn't it, you know, if I'm going from two to four, four to eight, the price per meg should be plummeting, but getting the eight terabyte ones, the, it's the latest tech, it's the biggest size they offer, and the price isn't you know, plummeting at that point. But the reason we went for these anyway, even though I could have spec this out with four, uh, 12 four terabyte drives and had enough space for the foreseeable future, you can't really see the future because I know my requirements are going to just keep going up and up and up. And the fact is that when this drive gets full, then I'm faced either with the option of buying a second one and then you know, specking that out with drives again, so completely doubling my cost, or if drive technology has changed enough, buying 12 new higher capacity drives to slot into this one. So either way, it's not an ideal situation, right? Better to have the most space I can possibly get in this one, given today's current technology and where everything's at, and then once that's getting full, then reevaluate it, see what's going to be the best partner for that one, and look at, again, getting the new biggest uh, technology drive. So it could be that in a year and a half, when I feel this, that they have 12 or 16 terabyte drives that we can throw into a new one. Okay, so now on to the 1263U, the machine itself, why we went for this one. Again, I have to say, when I was first talking to QNAP about solutions for longer term storage, rack mount never struck me as an option. It seems like the kind of thing 
you know, Google has to back up its search data, that kind of format, I'm much more used to the 871T desktop style of one. But then looking at what this did, it kind of ticked all the boxes in terms of what I needed for performance and to make my workflow work. It just wasn't in the layout that I was expecting. So a couple of things, if you don't know about NASs, they're basically, well, they are a computer. And the transfer speed that you get is going to be dependent not just on the interfaces you have, like you know what kind of connection is it using, but also on the processor and how it's able to compute the data and file it all away has a big impact on it. So this one's got a quad core processor and importantly, it's got 10 GBE connectivity, which at this price point is really unusual there. That's normally in much higher end models. And that's actually why we also went out and bought this cheapo switch. It's a fairly cheapo one, but that allows us to have four computers connect to the NAS and all run at full one gigabit per second connections. That's fantastic because for us, we do have multiple computers in the studio. We regularly will have Justin and I both working off machines and then also potentially have a third video editor in the studio who's helping out. So to be able to have multiple running at the highest speed is really fantastic. Look, I'll link all of this below so if you're a tech head, you can really delve into all the specs, but there were two other main reasons that we wanted to get this one. Uh, the first one is that it does also have the option of a 12 bay expansion, so then you can just get the unit to hold 12 more drives and have basically the brains of this one doing all the work. So that's much cheaper than buying a whole second unit, and then we can potentially in a year double or more than double our capacity as the drive technology expands. Always have to look forward because I don't want to end up with cupboards and cupboards of single hard drives like I used to have in the 90s and noughties of stuff that I just hadn't been able to keep up with and then it just sits around. I want my data accessible. The second thing is we actually upgraded the card in this one. We put the dual port 10 gigabyte network expansion card in this one. That is an optional extra, it did cost extra, but that card allows the two QNAPs to communicate over ethernet cable at full 10 gigabit per second with each other. And that's really important because like I said, we could re seriously, once a month could be working on 10 gigabyte, 10 terabytes, sorry, of files, and then want to move them across, know that they're backed up, put them to a second backup, put certain files to the cloud, verify everything, clear the cards because I'm out the door. We're actually right in the process of that. I'm out the door on Monday. So this is something that uniquely perhaps affects us, but as your work scales, you're likely to face it too. So that's where I am with my studio setup. On the road, I'm using SSDs, hard drives, and the new Lacey Rugged Raid guy to keep everything secure and backed up in that environment where I'm on the move, things are bouncing around. So having you know rugged options and SSD with no moving parts are a really important option for me. In the studio, I need things that are fast, that we can work off and that I can do long-term backup and that I know are expandable. Now, as I've disclosed before, I do work with Seagate and QNAP. They're long-term friends now of the channel and you know that has to be out there, you need to know that. But there's a reason that they're long-term friends and partners and you know it's not just a marriage of convenience. I really find that their products work for me. So I have no hesitation in endorsing them and saying that if you're looking for secure backups, then they're both great options. And that if you are going to be doing things in a RAID configuration, you really wanna look at getting the right drives. I understand that, I really understand that money is a consideration and that when you're comparing this to this, you need to do the cost benefit analysis in your head. Just please keep in mind as someone who has A, lost data himself, and someone who every day gets emails from people who bought my courses, didn't have it backed up properly and had their drives fail, data protection is such an important issue. And as photographers, videographers, people in this digital age, they're our assets. Your files are your assets. So if you put them on cheaper drives to save money, you don't back them up, you don't run it in RAID, you don't run it through high quality machines and things go wrong, it can all just be gone like that. And trust me, the frantic emails I get from people who've just lost everything, 
it's heartbreaking. So don't skimp out, you know, save up and get the, the right equipment for your needs. This is working for me. That said, I am always looking to the future. Space requirements and speed requirements are just gonna get bigger and bigger. We are already starting to look at what other super fast options we could add to augment a TVS 871T um, as even higher res video comes in and we're crunching more different video streams to put together more complex productions. So it's all a moving feast. Leave me any questions or comments that you might have. Would love to hear what you're using for your backup system and I'll see you soon.